There are three types of ways in which people build habits. Person number one has no idea that they're building habits even when they are. Person number two is aware of their habits but has no idea how to change them even if they wanted to. And person number three is well aware of their habits and understands how to break bad habits and replace them with good ones to improve their life. I'm gonna give you a five-step process on how to accomplish your health goals with passion, with energy, by breaking bad habits and forming good ones. But before I do, make sure you stay all the way to the end because missing out on one step could be the reason why you're not successfully breaking bad habits and forming good ones. Also comment below and let me know what your New Year's Eve resolutions are as far as habit forming or breaking is concerned. And if you get value from the video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Step number one is going to be strengthening your willpower muscle. I refer to willpower as a muscle because the more you flex your willpower, the bigger the muscle gets. In other words, the more you work on your willpower, the stronger it becomes. Willpower is number one because it's simple, but simple does not mean easy. Simple things are the hardest to change. However, you can build upon willpower, it can have the largest impact on habit formation. So what does building willpower look like? To understand how to strengthen willpower in an effort to break bad habits and form new ones, we have to understand the habit loop. As described in Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg, there's a three-part routine that forms a habit. First is the cue, you know, what cues the routine. Second is the routine. And third is the reward, the reward from the routine. Example of the cue is that you just finished a long day and now you're hungry, so you wanna go cook something. You get to slow down after a fast paced day by cooking. So you get a little bit of reward from that. But the real payoff is what you get to eat in the end, whether that's a cookie that provides quick dopamine, and understanding this process is understanding how we begin changing habits. The goal of any habit loop is the reward. You got your cue, you have your routine, and then you have your reward. However, Duhigg's golden rule is that the trick to changing a habit is to switch the routine and leave everything else intact. So we get our cue, then we need some willpower to change the routine. So in the example above, we get home from work, we wanna cook something good. Instead of making chocolate chip cookies to give us that feel good dopamine boost, maybe we make some sugar free, honey only peanut butter cookies. And we still get the same reward. We're still gonna get those feel good hormones, but we substituted that white sugar for honey. And I know it doesn't seem like that big of a switch from chocolate chip cookies to honey, peanut butter cookies. It's like you're still eating extra calories. And maybe you look up to someone who has full control of their diet and only eats those sweets whenever there's a holiday. It's important to remember that willpower doesn't start there. And that leads us into tip number two. Tip number two is starting small. And by starting small, I mean really small. You know, something that seems almost not worth keeping track of, something that you feel almost guilty about rewarding yourself for. So going back to our habit loop, in the beginning, while we're still working on willpower, we want the smallest amount of change in our routine in order to make the big change so that we can feel a difference in habit forming, but not in the reward system. And one way to feel that change is with delayed gratification, delaying the reward for a bit longer than normal in that habit loop while also slowly changing our routine, but keeping the reward the same. So then the routine itself is the reward. For example, if I have a goal of going to the gym every day after work, but I, when I get home, I wanna watch TV. I'm exhausted, I wanna just sit down. I've fed my family, I've fed my dogs. I just wanna relax. So starting really small, you know, instead of showering and putting on my PJs, I'm gonna put on my gym clothes and reward myself as though I actually went to the gym, even if I didn't go. And you cannot forget the reward here. The reward is huge because it leads us into step number three, which is to get 1% better each day. You see where I'm going with this? Maybe you already get it. If we're starting as small as possible and we're focused on getting 1% better every day, then eventually we will build an empire. So if yesterday I was happy about putting on my workout clothes, Today, I'm gonna to be happy about getting in my car or going downstairs to the gym and just maybe even touching the door handle is fine, right? Or walking in, looking around and walking back out and be happy with that. No, don't even be happy with that, be ecstatic. And that leads us into tip number four on our journey to breaking bad habits and forming good ones and that's to reward the small wins. We are just a sack of chemicals. And because of that, we can use these chemicals to help change our behavior. And that's part of rewarding the small wins. You know, I keep repeating how important the reward is and that's because we look back at our habit loop the cue, the routine, the reward. And we know that a routine associated with forming habits has to end with a reward. So we're gonna use these chemicals to let us know that this new routine is worth the effort. Not only will that reward make you feel better, but the effort in changing the routine will make you feel better as well. Going back to that delayed gratification, and eventually you won't even need the old reward. The routine itself will be the payoff. And guess what? Tomorrow, you'll do 1% better. And that leaves me to tip number five on how to break bad habits and form new ones, and that's enjoy the process. Now, I'm not saying this in just the meta way. I'm saying it based off of the habit loop that we know described in the power of habit. 
If the trick in changing a habit is to switch the routine and leave everything else intact, then while we are slowly building on this routine, let's have fun with it. Because the only true way to create long lasting change is to make it fun. Habits? Habits? We talking about habits? We, we talking about habits, right? We talking about practice. Practice, man. I mean, how silly is that?